Okay, we're going to work on the Dixie Chopper spindle. A little hard to take picture here, considering we're half in the garage and with the garage door open. And what we're going to do, we already got the spindle ready to take off. We're going to rebuild the spindle of the Dixie Chopper. And there's the top of it. We already have the blades off, which I can show you. And here's the blades. I change the blades about every second time of mowing, and I mow about a little over 35 acres at a time. So you can see exactly what they look like now, and you can see what a new one looks like. So they wear down the tips pretty fast. Uh, the blades, uh, these are the best blades I found too, by the way, and that's the ones I use. And it's a reasonable price, and the blades last you know, a lot better because we live in Florida and we have bahia grass and uh, we have a lot of sand. So these blades get sandblasted constantly. So that makes it a little tough. Plus we're changing these bearings. It's almost 100 degrees out here. No breeze, no nothing. So that's what we're going to do today. We got to remove that dirty spindle. So we got to take it out and then we're going to change and put brand new bearings in it and put it back. Haven't done that for probably three, four years. And uh, when I do one, I do them all. First thing we have to do is take these four bolts out. These are those lousy stove bolts that they put in. So theoretically they don't turn and anything underneath I already put oil on these things to break them loose they should uh, the stove bolts will drop naturally straight down to the bottom just like that one did it's according to how much stuff's on the bottom of the deck how much rust, corrosion, dead grass, the normal stuff. Okay. I'm just trying to push some of these bolts in. Okay. Now I just pull this out. And there you are. That's all it is. Only four bolts holds it. Real easy to get out. Now the next thing we're going to do is this mess right here. Uh, I'll just take a wire brush and clean this to make it easier to work with so it's not as dirty. And that's what we're going to do now. We'll just take a wire brush. Just clean the crud off. As you can see here. That's what it looks like clean, and that's what it looks like not. And the only reason we're doing this is start from a clean surface, get the surface rust off. And we're going to clean the threads off real fast. Okay. Got a little bad spot right there on the threads. Let me hit it one more time. Yeah, got it. Now we're getting ready to take it apart. These bolts right here are the ones from the blade. I took them and put them on the uh, wire wheel and cleaned them up a little. Now we're getting ready to take this apart. Okay, we got to take 
the spindle part and they have a snap ring right here and just pull it in and it snaps right back Okay, got the snap ring off of the one side. One thing we could have done already, because we're going to push a shaft here. All the way through. See how easy that is? This collar right here is kind of frozen to the shaft. So I'm going to put some penetrating oil on it. Like so. We're going to try the vice grip trick. There it goes. Look how easy that was to get the ring off. Now the ring's off. Now let's see what's going to come out. And the answer to that is no. This actually shaft should slide through. The other two didn't have this problem naturally. It'll be the one that I'm making the videotape. So we're going to go over to the press. Okay, we're going to use the press here. And I really don't like to use it that much because it likes to do a lot of damage. Okay. Make sure it's in the dead center. Okay, that's probably it. Because it's not putting any resistance against it and it already dropped out. Probably drop on my toe when I pick it up. Oh yeah, as you can see it's pushed out a little. We can get it the rest. It's just flopping. As you can see, we're back to the what it looked like before. <laughs> Except it might come out. Or it might not. Hey, we got some rubber in there. I could probably pull that out, but believe it or not, I actually have stitches in the middle of my hand. I have no strength, and, and if the quack knew that I was doing what I was doing, he'd be yelling at me. Anyway... There. 
Okay, there it's out. Now we're gonna check the rod real fast. Mm, got a little rust there where it spin just a little. But this is all, you can clean that up no problem. This is no issue at all. Because usually I try to clean, clean them out and replace them before it does damage. If I notice they've got play on one, I change them all. But this is probably the first time I changed them in four years, so. Okay, they do have a lot of grease everywhere. And that means at least I maintain them. Okay, taking this pin out, and here we are. It's the same size as the other one, except this one don't have as much crud on it. Now the next, we have oil seals on both sides, this end and the other end. Considering this is all garbage, and we're going to just use, we're going to go to the side like that. Go to the other side. Eh, it went all the way down as far as I could knock it. Now let's do the other side. Oh, look at that. See, the other side just came right out. Okay, here's the seal right here. Here's the bearing right here. Ah, even the plastic covers there missing. And here's the other seal. And now we just got to get this other one out. Usually you can just Hold it up in an upward direction like that. Rotate it a little. Okay. Ah, thought it came out. It didn't. Okay, we're just going to put a socket in there to do that. Like I should have done before. So I put a socket on extension. You can see how much grease is on this thing. And this actually needs to be raised a little. There. <laughs> now that made it easy. One or two hits. I'm going to hit it real easy. Jesus. There. Okay. Grease everywhere. There's the grease. Right here. There's the bearing. Here's the seal that didn't want to come out. And here's all the grease that's everywhere. So, we're going to have to take some paper towels, clean all that stuff out inside and everything, and we'll start the videotape again. I'm going to take these good gloves off. Say, so there's all my stitches. I wasn't bullshitting you. Okay, we're going to take a break. And then as soon as we start again, we're going to put the paper towels in here and clean this out. And then we're going to put it all back together. Okay, first thing we did 
we cleaned all the grease out and everything. Start on a new board. This is a little test that I like to do. Make sure the grease fitting is functioning before you even put this thing together. Plug the grease fitting in. Yeah, it works. It pushed the grease right in the middle of the chamber, which means that's not clogged. So, as you can tell, it's in right there. It's not clogged or anything, so that's good. So, first thing we need to do is you take a bearing, and they're all 6205 RS-16s. You can drop the bearing right in, and as you can tell, it just fell all the way down there. Then you take a seal, and you lay it here. You put the socket on the top. And you push down the seal crooked. But there it is, it's, it's fine. Then take a snap ring. And make sure you get it inside that hole. And always just make sure it's seated good. I usually like to go in the middle and give it one little tap. Now the other way, do the same thing. You just drop that in and drop bearing in. This seal goes way down in that hole. And it's all the way, make sure it's passed. You can see the groove right there. So make sure it's past that. And you take the clip ring. And you can put the clip ring in. See right now it's not in the seal. But I'm just going to push it down and let it fall right in. Just to make sure everything's in there nice and good, I'm just going to move it around. Say so now, so yeah, it's really popped in. So that's good. So everything's in there nice and steady. This rod here just goes in this direction all the way to the top. And this little sleeve gets popped over. And there it is. It is done. So now the only thing we got to do is come over here and just put it right back into the hole. And just make sure you put it exactly where that grease fitting is easy to get to. And just put the screws back in, put the nuts on, you're done. So that was easy enough. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. When you get a chance, if you would please subscribe to my channel, that would help us out. Thank you.